Hello everybody, E here. Today is a request um, for a From the Desk episode from my friend Laertes DD here on YouTube. He wanted me to talk about pantsing. Um, there is, it's one of the number one questions that is asked by reviewers, especially template, review, not reviewers, interviewers, um, especially template interviewers is, are you a plotter or a pantser? I myself am mostly a pantser. I just sit down and start writing. Um, recently I, ha I had to do some plotting to try and make sure that my, but it was kind of after the fact, after I had written all the books, I went back with the last three books to make sure that they made sense um, contextually, uh, and I had to draw out an outline and actually write down everything, but that's a bit different because I still winged it. Winged it? winged it. <laughs> I'm an author. <laughs> I use words. Um, but the last three Bay's End books, uh, which I completed back in 2016, um, No Home for Boys was finished back, I think it was 2016. Um, I pantsed, I, I winged it throughout that entire series um, with one thought in mind, knowing where No Home for Boys was going to end. Now, if you're watching this video when I upload it, you still have to wait until June to read No Home for Boys. But uh, Bay's End was a pantser novel, uh, The Sound of Broken Ribs, The Bedding of Boys, Everything is Horrible Now, and No Home for Boys. All those books were pantsed. <laughs> but the last three were outlined after the fact, and I had to do some major changes to the last two books to make them fit, because that's the problem that you have with pantsing. Now, pantsing, the, the whole purpose of pantsing is to get out the raw emotional story that is stuck in your head. Um, basically, what Stephen King calls, and I know I go back to him all the time, but I learned most of the stuff that I've learned from Stephen King, so I always hearken back to him unless I can get some better information off another author, and then I'll bring them up. But uh, he, he calls it, it's like archaeology. The stories are there, we're just uncovering them. I feel the same way for a plotter. It's just what a plotter does with their outlines and their brainstorming is what a pantser does when they're just writing. Now, a first draft from a pantser looks like a hot mess. Um, I've heard Lee Child writes a near-perfect pantser novel, but he also has established characters. Um, he has established lore and back... I, I want to say lore, but it's history with the characters, because he writes thrillers, Jack Reacher and whatnot. It's much easier to write a thriller with recurring characters, because you don't have to keep up with... Um, well, it's easier to keep up with, because you're only working with a set group of folks. Um, now, you got, Lee, uh, you got Jack Reacher doing his thing. He always does the same thing. You know, he's a badass, that kind of thing. Um, and you have people coming in and out of his life. Whereas with some, with standalones, you're dealing with a brand new cast of characters every single time, and you do not have that established history. So do I think Lee Child cheats? No. But do I think it's a little bit easier to do that? Yes, because I myself had to do that at one point in time in my career. Now, um, I've had several series, thriller series. I've had one under this name, the Larry Laughlin series. Three of those books still aren't, well, actually four of them. <laughs> I keep forgetting that uh, Pennies isn't out yet. But uh, Hope for the Wicked, Pennies for the Damned, Flesh for the Asking, um, Corpses for the Grinder, and Judgment for the Righteous are all in that series. Um, so my own personal belief is it is easier to pants when you have established characters. It's much easier to take those characters and do something with them. Um, of course, I, if that's easier, then I find you know either big casts or new casts much more difficult to manage because you're having to come up with whole new histories, whole new, you know, everything. Now, how do you do it? That is, that's the magical question. That's why Laertes wanted me to do this. Um, and I'm kind of skirting around it because I don't even know how I do it. So we're going to talk it out. I'm actually going to sit here and I'm going to try to pants. Now, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I have no way to screen record but I can write you what comes up. Now when I sit down, my process is I'm going to open up um, and I don't have a screen recorder either so I apologize for that. Um, the only thing I could really do is have another camera back here recording it but I mean you, you can you can take me for my word I hope. Um, I'm going to go into my writing software. By the way, I use Word. I don't use Scrivener or any of these other apps or anything. I don't understand why anybody 
would use anything other than Word. I know you have to pay for it, and I know Google Docs is free. I hate Google Docs. Um, it is a laggy mess, and I don't use it. I'm going to go into New. When I start a new project, um, sometimes if, like, I had to finish that series. Um, I had that, so I had in mind, I was going from one book to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. When I originally wrote Bay's End, I had an idea for a sequel to it that ended up being about a thousand pages long. I chopped that up and turned it into the series that it became. Because each one of those characters had a much bigger backstory. Because um, I knew from the get-go, and this is a slight spoiler for Bay's End, I knew that Eddie's ghost wasn't just, hit, wasn't just Trey's imagination. So when I go in, and this is this is new for me, so I wish I had a screen recorder to do this. But when I go in, um, I usually do Untitled. I do type that first, then I type my name, uh, Edward Lorne. Sorry, it is up on a. Okay, I'm not comfortable because of this thing. Anybody got use those things? I'm supposed to because I got the carpal carpet tunneler syndrome. Um, so I do that, I type my name, and then I just start typing. Um, one of the things that I remember a editor of mine saying, an editor saying, <laughs> she said she got rid of the first three paragraphs of anybody's work. Um, anytime a book starts or a new chapter starts, she got rid of the first three paragraphs. Um, and the person, the writer barely even noticed um, that it had been deleted. Now, there's two problems with that. First off, I called her on it because track changes. I mean, we work with track changes. You can see what's deleted, and I can't imagine anybody just uh, just blindly agreeing to the first three paragraphs um, deleted. But I do know where she's coming from. Most authors take a good three paragraphs. Sometimes it's a whole page to get going. Um, I know I'm that way. Usually when I sit down to write, the first 500 words is utter garbage that I either have to ex I have to clean up extremely. Because not only are you working through through your, your mental capacity, but you're all, you also have a, have a physical limit limitability? No, that's not right. What's that word? I'm an author, y'all. That's the second time I've said this. You also have, um, you have to get through the physicality also. So your fingers have to warm up. You're going to make a lot of errors. You're going to type stuff like um, your, your instead of you are a con contraction. You're going you're, you're gonna to make huge mistakes. The opening of any chapter, if you're like me and write chapter to chapter to chapter, the opening of every, every chapter is going to be pretty rough. Um, now, recently, I used to do, actually that's a lie, I used to do um, chapter to chapter to chapter. Um, so many chapters in a day, but nowadays I just write until I hurt. So I try to get, but I still try to wrap up that thought without wrapping up that scene. Um, what I mean by that is I always leave something unwritten for the next day. It gives me the motivation to come out here and do it. Now it's kind of like, it's, it, well it is routine, not kind of like. It's routine, I come out and I do it. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to, this is pantsing. I'm, I have nothing in my head. In fact, I'm focused on talking to you guys, so what's going to come out probably has to do with writing. And I'll stop every, you know, line and say, you know, whatever I wrote. So, alright, I just typed, the darkness was overpowering. I have no idea why. Um... In the corner stood a damaged mannequin. I could probably just read. I could probably read this. Okay, this is a prime example. I just typed "its." The mannequin tilted its head. I did the "it" apostrophe "s," which is wrong. Um, it's it would be the "it s" without the apostrophe because that's the possessive one. So the man the mannequin tilted its head. Um, let's see here. What did it do? I don't know what it did. Uh, well, I don't want to use, I always like to use gather, uh, gathering info, but that's, <laughs> that's terrible writing. Um, collecting information, that's not a way, because that's, it might be what this, uh, sentient mannequin is doing, because it just tilted its head. Um, but, let's use, but, let's just keep on going. Let's do gathering information about the room. That's way. That's how you don't get. That's how you try not to get stuck on. 
gathering information. Why did I gathering and information is what I typed. Gathering information about the room. Now that's bad writing, okay? But I'm but how you how you work pantsing is you just plow through. You don't think too hard. I'm thinking too hard right now because I have someone watching me. I have all of you watching me. But the darkness was overpowering. In the corner stood a damaged mannequin. The mannequin tilted its head, gathering information about the room. Um, and then I am I'm a stickler for going in and actually setting up my formatting uh, so that I don't have to do it later. So I do by in my indent paragraph by point three. So I do that. Um, I also work in. Now it's starting to bother me because it's not. It's set for uh, Calibre. Calibre, whatever it's called. I go to Times Roman and then I go to uh, 12. And then I set the paragraph spacing to 1.5 and no. And the before and after is zero. And I'm a, I'm a happy dude after that. So I'm going to call this. Now I have a title. I'm just going to call it Mannequin for now. Now that I know, now that I'm in here doing this, I really should have done this on Google Docs and then recorded. I think I'll do that next time. If you guys want to see that, or if you want to, you want me to do this live next time. Um, now the the feed will break up, of course, because I don't have the best internet. But um, what we can do is I can record this and write live, so it'd be kind of backwards. You can watch the commentary afterwards. If you guys are interested in that, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. So the darkness was overpowering. At this point, I'm going to keep on rereading what I have um, in case if I ever get stuck or whatever. And if you do get stuck to the point where you can't think anymore, move on to something else. The darkness was overpowering. In the corner stood a damaged mannequin. The mannequin tilted its head, gathering information about the room. Now the editor in me already wants to know what the mannequin looks like. So I would go back... Um, if I kept on doing that, just to pad this, it's not padding, really, because you need to know. Um, stood a damaged mannequin. One missing arm. One missing arm. And a chipped face. It's a damaged mannequin. I'm going to do a damaged mannequin at colon. I like the way that looks better. Uh, with one missing arm and a chipped face. No, I think I'll do a comma there. See, this is how this is how I work. This is this is how I work when I don't know what to write next. I go back and I edit what I already have. Um, the darkness was overpowering, and the could in the corner stood a damaged mannequin. One uh, stood a damaged mannequin with one missing arm and a chipped face. The beige, beige, beige. No, the white styro. Boom. I don't know how to spell styrofoam. I know it's supposed to be capitalized. Uh, peeking through the beige flesh. It's not really flesh, but I, th I like that. I like the, the image of that. So I'm going to do... So all that's the... That first sentence has grown to uh, the darkness... No. It's the first two uh, sentences. The darkness was overpowering. In the corner stood a damaged mannequin with one missing arm and a chipped face. The white styrofoam peeking through the beige flesh. The mannequin tilted its head, gathering information about the room. Okay, that's where we're going to stop for this. Now, I had no idea sitting down, and this is where the magic comes in. I hate saying it like that because you guys want information. You guys want hard facts. I don't have hard facts for you. I sat down. I haven't... Last time I see, I've seen a mannequin uh, probably watching a Markiplier gameplay on YouTube. Um, is probably a year ago. Uh, I, I haven't been thinking about mannequins. Mannequins are not up in here in my head. That image came from somewhere in a in a dark room. The darkness is overpowering. There's some weight to it. And in the corner stood a damaged mannequin. And the the closer I looked in my head at this thing, the more I saw. That's why I had to go back and edit it because I wanted to know exactly what it looked like. And then the mannequin was inquisitive. So the, the easy easiest way to denote that or to bring that across is to have it tilt its head. You know, like an inquisitive dog. Uh, that's an overused thing, too. I still use it, but it's overused. Um, gathering information about the room is bad writing. Gathering information about the room is not interesting verbiage. Um, so I would go back and change that in another draft. But the fir first and foremost, what you are doing is the same thing that a plotter is doing. You're just actually writing the story as you're doing it. What you're going to do later on is you're going to go back, instead of writing it out the first time as a first draft, you are going to write a rough draft that is a mangled mess and then you're gonna take that and use that as an outline to rewrite the book 
That's all pantsing is. It's just a different way of brainstorming. So I hope this has helped, especially for you, Learty's DD. I have no idea how long this video is. Um, I'm expecting it's pretty long and rambling, but uh, you guys seem to like that stuff. So yeah. Um, but until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been From the Desk. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!